This is the OKest Hunter Podcast. Never pass on shooter bucks, if that's just me in the freezer. It's your tag, you hunt how you want. This is OKest Hunter. Smooth. Jepson's bourbon. I thought you guys were going to shit your pants when it's, you saw this it's follow def- out. It's definitely the Malort of bourbon. <laughs> did you not get like a tingle I, down I your did. spine a when you saw that? A little bit of a tingle and, and a little turn of the stomach when I saw that. Tingle in my hind end. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> That was a little scary. What was it? Instant <laughs> diarrhea? It I intended on drinking this the night we had the Malort, but then I was way too freaked out. <laughs> I couldn't do it. So. I don't think Matt's had the Malort yet. Have you had it? I've had Malort. Okay. Just not Good with save. Us. Good yeah. save there. <laughs> so it was not great. It's was not it the, great. Was it the first drink of the night or one of the last? Or was it in the middle? Right in the middle. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. You ruined the rest of the night of drinking. <laughs> I had a buddy, yeah. Shane got trashed on just the Malort because we were doing this game about like the, there's that YouTube commercial it's like Malort I'll have another and then he takes a shot and then he describes what it tastes like so then our buddy Shane we made him do that we made everyone do it but he, he just kept going he's like Malort I'll have another I'll have another uh, and like 12 later we're like what's wrong with him <laughs> <laughs> and he just kept going and then he got trashed <laughs> Oh man, not a good one. My yeah. stomach hurts. He's like, just it's fine. I don't it. think it tastes bad at all. I'm like, you're not normal. <laughs> There's something wrong with your taste buds, dude. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> they're gone. Well, well, when you drink lighter fluid all the time, that may be why. I don't yeah, know. that could be it. Does anyone else want to do the ad reads today? There's no reading. I just make it up. Oh, no. We're brought to you by Half Rack. <laughs> Half Dash Rack.com. Use code OHP for 15 percent off. I went a little yeah, crazy if, with the the hunter hangers. If you go studio. to the site and they're out of stock for the hunter hangers, <laughs> you'll know why. Blame, blame Eric <laughs> Clark for that. <laughs> There's hunter hangers everywhere. I mean, they hold up our headset, a bow, a grunt call, and I don't know what else. I think that's it for now. I'm I think they're holding the door on and hinges too. Underwear rack in the bed. <laughs> TV. Oh too. yeah, TV. Yep, yeah. TV. yep. They're definitely holding up the TV. Yeah, they're uh, they're very useful, very practical, and. I want to do like a video with the swivel. I keep talking with the stupid swivels. I don't even. It's not even like a best-selling thing. I don't care. He but loves I want. The you know, like totally, he loves I, I, I totally have an idea for a commercial for you to make. Well, you know, you know how people like. There's always the, the guy <laughs> totally that turns do. evil in the chair, like rolls around, and then he like rolls back. Dr. I want to do that. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're just we're just I'll gonna just, put you out. I'll just get in the chair and I'll be like, no. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm really good at turkey calling, guys. <laughs> you heard that right. You've been practicing. <laughs> yes, you have. I just busted these out right now. They're real, they're all slight. Oh, full slide. This is okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna choke on that thing. <laughs> Someone said you're supposed to say like "ow, ow, ow" when you do it in your mouth. <laughs> we know I that's mean, what the turkeys are saying. Ow. <laughs> yeah, ow, <laughs> ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Turkeys are covering their ear holes another one of those and running away. Situations where I got gullible. <laughs> <laughs> did you, yeah, hear, did you hear about that one? What do you mean? Which one? No, we were at we were at the trade <laughs> show and and I was live on I don't know TikTok or something and someone said, "Please say a prayer, my my Dixie, comma she's wrecked." <laughs> and I was like, "My Dixie wrecked," <laughs> and I just kept saying it like I didn't fish get on. It. And then, and then oh, we got. That's like I think he means you're. You know. <laughs> I was doing this in the back. Of- <laughs> He's messing with you. Uh, I wish uh, I was wearing this shirt. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so that was fun. Latitude Outdoors. Hey. There we go. Speed sticks are coming. Platforms are coming. Garbage. Can't wait. We had a really fun conversation last week about the, the two-piece saddle system. We did. The, and what do you call the many, sky? The, the sky? many benefits. <laughs> the sky popper? What did he call it? The sky it? dump? The sky dump. Sky dump. Yeah. I, f- I feel bad because I keep saying that that's what it's good yeah, for. Yeah, man. I, you're I've never not... done that, but you're never going to forget about it. It's also good for hunting and yeah. like, stuff like that, but it is recreational. <laughs> <laughs> recreational pooping as well. <laughs> they should just, they should, April Fool's came out with toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hunter Hook. Latitude paper. That's on the, almost on the a toilet hook. paper spindle. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could work. 
Put that in the outhouse. <laughs> no, I killed this buck out of it. We are saddle. literally that shitting is, on our sponsors right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guys. They're awesome. Yes, they I, are. I love that saddle. I really do. I mean, how much I can I talk about? Does anyone hunt out of stands or saddles for turkey? Is that uncommon? It yes. seems very uncommon. Very uncommon. Would it be fun? Probably. I actually do have a spot that crossed my mind the other day that I might saddle hunt for turkeys. In. <laughs> That'd be a great YouTube title. Saddle hunting for turkey. Got it done. And hey, if I don't have any good turkey footage, I can always, you know, get a sky dump on. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get that on camera. Are you sure? Oh, someone's trail camera probably. GoPro footage. Up. There you go. <laughs> action shot right there you know you have this one pointing down can i have one pointing up <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Glass, you're, you're gonna know. see a lot more than you bargained for it's under a piece of glass oh, Lord <laughs> one <mercy>. single plop. <laughs> how many pins do you have uh in your spartan forge for turkeys how are you leveraging it for turkey scouting well one could say you would probably use it in the dark as you're navigating your way in Especially if uh, you got an unfamiliar piece of property where you're wanting to uh, get to a certain area, if you put a pin on the map and you follow a trail in, it'd be pretty easy to do. It's a pretty obvious way. Mm-hmm. Very obvious. You were using it on the ocean, weren't you? I was. I did use it on the ocean just to scout out the uh, the cuts in uh, right off the surf, right off the beach. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, Matt's here, by the way. <laughs> Hey, Matt. Hi, don't Matt. Forget, don't forget hey about that guy. We got the other OKS Fisher podcast host in the room. Him and Greg are running that whole thing. Mm-hmm. If you haven't heard it, you're missing out. You got to go check it out. Although they're slacking this week. We don't have an episode up yet. Well, we, we did record one. We recorded <laughs> one, <laughs> but we, we thought, <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe we'll hang on to that one for a little <laughs> bit here and let it let it stew and you know let it age a little bit. Unlike this bourbon, it might get better with age. Yeah, maybe a little more water. <laughs> Who's shooting uh, their, their method arrows? At uh, turkey, is anyone? Are you guys all bringing shotguns? Or is anyone bringing a bow? That's the thing. People bow hunt with turkeys. Or yeah, bow yeah. Hunt for turkeys. I'm. Uh, I'm. It's. It's an option. It, yeah, it is an option for me too. I have a place where I could chuck up a blind. Although we all know how well it goes. <laughs> we <saw> episode. <laughs> oh, how great it goes. I know, seven. I know you like shooting out of those. Blinds. I love them, <laughs> especially with a bow. Yeah, you gonna fling it right over its back again. Yep, I might you just send thing. one, air mail one right over. I really want to use my bow, but I don't want to put up a blind. No. Because I don't want anyone to see, like, you know what I mean? A blind is so well, glaringly obvious that people, like, can that see, guy's, that guy's even if you having... only have it up for a couple hours, like. But maybe that means they'll stay away. Like, yeah. well, I'm obviously not going to knock on that mm. farmer's door. <laughs> that guy's there. No, they're going right up to it. Is anybody in there? Oh, jeez. Dude, get away here. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, I'm hunting here. Why well, use Spartan Forge and said there's no one here in the satellite imagery last night? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got one spot. It's like a overgrown grass field, and last year the turkeys were out there like crazy. You could just see like fans above the grass. I don't know why they're out in this tall grass field, but they like going out there in the morning. Hens were there this morning for nesting. Usually later in the season, but this morning they were all out there. Four fans sticking out of the grass. <laughs> they're there, so I'm well, like, there's no good setup spots there. But I'm like, if I sat out there with my bow and I just had my little turkey fan in front of me, like they might come in and I might be able to just. Pop oh, yeah. up over the top and get a Anytime shot. Every time I see tall grass like that, it reminds me of that Jurassic Park movie. I don't know a number. I don't know which number one it was when those raptors are going through the grass. Mm-hmm. I mean, turkeys are actually called raptors, right? There's no, a flock of them. They are not. That is so. that. Is somebody in the comments back me up. That is a fact. Was it Dixie? Dixie Raptor? <laughs> <laughs> Dixie Rick. Yeah. I swear to God, I've heard this before. A group of turkeys is called raptors. I mean, a raptor's a bird of prey. Yeah, raptors are bird. I think we have a blog article on our website about how turkeys are actually just dinosaurs. I think you better research your blog. Everything's kind of just dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're hatching. I from always eggs, wanted to be dude. a dinosaur when I grew up. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Step brothers. Well, but that's not possible, Dad. You can't be a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> so one day I just gave up on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gotta channel shit. your inner dinosaur. I don't know. You tagged. Uh, you tagged uh, some antlers that you found. Uh, some sheds on Go Wild. How many did you find the other day? Well, yesterday I found eight, which is actually my personal best day for numbers, but they were all tiny. <laughs> like, you could put them in your pocket. <laughs> Those are the hardest ones to find, as we often yeah. talk about. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You can disguise that. Did you find anything? No, I didn't. I didn't find nothing. Yep, there you go. Hiding in your pockets. Yeah, so you between... Were just, you were just training your eyesight. That's all you were doing. It's I mean, I was, I was spotting them pretty good, but um, between the amount that squirrels chewed off of antlers and 
the overall size being like six inches or less. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't a great day for quality, but I was happy. Happy to find some. You know, quantity I over quality. You'll have days like that, even in fishing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, guys. Silver dollar. I'm sharing on the screen here. <laughs> sure. The wild turkey. Flame blue. Mel- Melagris <laughs> galapavo. <laughs> It's is an upland PG game version. bird native to North America. Wild turkeys have many calls, <clears throat> gobblers, yelp, clucker, purrs, or turkeys related raptors. Meet the relatives, the dinosaur family tree. Your holiday turkey is a, what the hell? How do you pronounce that? A sir, can somebody say that? Sorcianian dinosaur, like Apatosaurus, Tyrannosaurus, and Velociraptor. Sorician. When I first learned that a group of turkeys is called a rafter? Oh, I thought there was raptor, so I'm wrong twice. <laughs> My first thought was dinosaur, but it's because they look like a raptor. Well, this is, I'm getting, I'm getting schooled here by the internet. A rafter? Yep, that's it. I like my Thanksgiving dinosaur. We're looking okay so far. <laughs> How many turkeys are in a rafter? But it does take. <laughs> but I think that. Well, you... looking at these rafters, I'd say none. <laughs> hey, guys. Are they roosting in the rafters? A rafter of turkeys. <laughs> when you see a group of rafters of turkeys, there will be two or more found together. And yes, by all means, shout it out. All right, internet. Fuck you. I thought I was onto something there. <laughs> all right, from this point I forward. Was close. It was not. It was not in any reason for me not believe that. Like. From this point forward, it was within on my this Lord group again. chat, at least, all groups of turkeys will be known as raptors. R- <laughs> <laughs> and a whole flock and, and of it's raptors. Not gonna, no, no, this no, no, it's not going to be a flock. It's going to be a school of raptors. School, school of, raptors. of raptors. I like Why it. are yes. you called raptors? I thought for sure it meant like raptor, as in dinosaur. I've been I will saying that say, for years, and no one's corrected me. <laughs> I will say raptors almost makes more sense than raptors. <laughs> but I, couldn't, I didn't discern why raptor was the term. So... You learn something new every day. Beware of ticks. Oh, yeah. Ticks are not good. Tom DeCray. Yeah. Right. I had a couple on me already. Really? Yep. From just out and about tread hunting or what? Walking yesterday. Had like <sighs> probably five or six that I picked off me. That's cool. That's Chest, alarming. stomach. I had my shirt tucked in, socks tucked into the you know pants, pulled over the socks, all that jazz. And no gators, huh? No gators. Just decided not to do the gators. She was hot yesterday. Yeah, she was Didn't hot. Didn't need the leg sweat. <laughs> God dang it. I hate ticks. Stupid animals. I really need to just spray I, down some clothes with that permethrin. I have a whole yellow giant bottle I got off Amazon. I will definitely spray anything. I have it sat in my garage for three years. I've never sprayed it. Mm. Stupid. Question. Have any of you reaped a turkey yet? I tried. I did too and failed miserably. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a skinny in, in shape guy's game. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm 6'2", I'm 6'3". Six, six, I can't hide behind a fan. No. I went 700 yards on my belly through a muddy field and had one come screaming in. He saw you hanging on the edges? Well, no, he got to like 50 yards, and he's like, Dad, it's too big to be a turkey. And I was like, <laughs> no, we're never through the, through the decoy. <laughs> Pulled the gun up. It was just covered in mud. I'm like, Leroy crap. Jenkins. <laughs> the barrel is just Everything. log. Yeah. So I kind of flung it off and shot. Yeah, I was nowhere near. But Closest I've come was I, I spotted a turkey out in this little field up by the cabin. So I was like making a loop on it and I got up to like where I could kind of see the opening and he wasn't there. And I was like, oh crap. But I had like my decoy in my hand. And all of a sudden I looked and he's standing like 30 yards away looking at me and I'm like, shit. And I took my decoy and I just kind of started doing this while I'm standing there. You're giving and he went into full this? strut, you know, and I was like, this stupid turkey. <laughs> so then I just this slowly got work. down. I'm wiggling the decoy. So I put it down and I rested my gun on top of the decoy and he came right into 20 yards and I shot him. <laughs> So I didn't really reap them, but I yeah, gave them the old trickaroo. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you danced around in front of them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I had gave the moves. Them, you did a little dance. <laughs> they were good for crossing openings, though. If you're oh, trying yeah. to get field edge to field edge, I try to be as small as I can walking. and I've Which is difficult, to, but... Very, yeah. very mm-hmm. difficult. No, but if they do pop out, it's way better than yeah, there's like, you walking. That's a weird turkey. He's six feet tall, and, you know... Yeah. It's tall Tom over there. <laughs> Tell you what, when you're sitting your buns on the ground, seen, seen, they do look like they're six feet tall. Oh yeah. Have you seen the videos of the guys that like get down and do like a you know the turkey walk and they strut and the turkeys come into that? Those kind are of farm stuff? birds. That's funny. I've seen videos like that. They're funny. Yeah. They're funny, but it's not real. How's that hams? Delicious. Oh. It's a cold pork chop in a can, buddy. I haven't had it. It is. I haven't had long. I'm not crushing hams. You know, it's not bad. That was the beer of choice in college for. But that was like six dollars for a twelve pack or something. It's not. You know what? I I I prefer it over that other thing you got hiding in that. Apparently, you and everybody else right now. No, just drinkability. It's pretty damn good. 
It tastes good. No, there's a there's an old PBR commercial. It's not a real commercial. It's like some YouTube video. Again, back in the day, I was really into just like going into nerd holes on YouTube. And this uh, PBR commercial, he's like, my name is Tom Raper, and I am American, and I drink PBR. And my 12-year-old son, he can go in and to the gas station, the grocery store, and buy PBR. And they check the ID. They say, he says, no, you check the state. He's from the state of Louisiana, and you serve him. He's an American citizen. It has nothing to do with the fact that he's 12. He goes, it's not like it's good, but that's what's, or he said, it's not like it's drinkable, but that's what is good about it. It's like the Americans, the Brits going down your throat to fight the Redcoats. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? So after that, I just drank PBR for like two years straight. I couldn't get enough. He did one year. <laughs> oh, same reason why I got into Malort, stupid YouTube. But yeah, you would say it's it's not drinkable, but that's what's good about it. <laughs> that was like one of the best lines I've heard in the last decade. <laughs> I don't know if that's true for hams, if that's what you mean. It sounds like it is drinkable, but it's that's drinkable. what's good about it. Land of the sky blue waters. Yeah. Buddy of mine, Chris Rosenberg, a.k.a. Rosie, loves fucking hams. Like, loves it. So go by Rosie Palms? Well, that seems Rosenberg, so just Rosie. And, okay. and his biceps are about the size of my freaking legs. They're bigger than my legs these days. So I, I shouldn't call him Rosie Palms when I meet him. <laughs> he's, got the, he's got a chest the size of a fucking, I don't know, the Hulk. So when he says it, he does say it with his chest. <laughs> yeah, say it with your chest. <laughs> say it with your chest. He's a big man. I hope he listens to this episode. He's a dump truck driver, and he's got a mouth like a sailor. It's one of my favorite people to get drunk with. <laughs> We'll hang out, our wives, and, I, and then and then him and I are just trash talking about who knows what. <laughs> and my wife's like, wow, you really let your filter go. I'm like, I have no filter when I'm around Chris. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is my favorite time of year. Trying to fit in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so turkeys, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about turkeys. Raptors. Uh, yeah, raptors. Raft, raptors. Raptors. Ra- raptors. Where do you find them? Let's start there. School like I know you look at roost, and, and but like it seems like every video I've ever seen of a turkey hunt actually is a field. Like you're not going deep into the woods to be a badass to kill a turkey, right? You can though. You can. I mean, anybody can make anything look pretty badass and go deep. But and is that far. where the turkeys are? Sometimes. Like what I, I wouldn't hunt them exactly like a whitetail. Well, no. The best thing about turkey hunting is when you put them to bed, they're not going to move. They're going to be there the next morning. They don't have eight hours of darkness to sneak around on you and throw you off. So, so. you kind of see where they're where they're going to head in. That's the easiest way: spot birds and. Put them to bed at night, and you know you put a play on them in the morning. Put them to bed does not mean kill them. No. Roost them. Yeah. Listen to that. Not not roast them. Again, you guys, the terms are too close. (laughs) Roast roast and rafters. We're going to roast some rafters. (laughs) We're going to roast a whole school of them. (laughs) No, but like uh, what Matt was saying, you know, if you figure out, or even if you don't know where they're roosting, like you drive around early in the morning, and typically, not always, because you're going to have... Turkeys that do this in the woods too, but like turkeys love to go to big open areas in the morning and strut and show off, especially early in the season with all the other turkeys. So you get to learn pretty quick mm-hmm. where there's groupies, you know, groupies. Groupies. <laughs> groupies. <laughs> Turkey groupies. The groupies, man. <laughs> where the groupies are at. That wasn't me this time. I didn't, that one's made up. Mine was, mine was based on something real. Factual. Mine was not. <laughs> yeah, so once you find the groupies. <laughs> The groupies the roost, of rafters. The, yeah, the the groupies of rafters. The beds aren't far away. The old roost tree. It's not far away. So you got to kind of figure out which direction they're going to fly down. And like that that old one we saw and, that and, and, last year, and she's that, flying from forever. And that away. can change from the with the wind. It literally can. Like there be because of the wind. Though, there'll right? be three days in a row where they fly down the same area. And if there's one thing that screws it up, it could be a coyote running through. It could be a hunter. It could be anything. There, chances are you're not going to get that same groupie of rafters coming down <laughs> and hanging out in that area again. They're going to move north, south, east, or west of okay. where you saw them. Like we're just making shit up here. Not a lot of people think this is an educational podcast. But well, let me well, tell you well, what. Well, today. They shouldn't expect anything less. <laughs> so. some stuff. People have learned from this podcast. That's unbelievable. That, that is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> We had one the other time. What was it? Last week or two weeks? This one said, oh, "I didn't, I didn't know that." But the coffee, I didn't know some about like the the, the lighter roast yeah. stronger. That was a new learning some people had. Go figure. So I don't know. So when you locate them, or you have an idea of where they are, you don't necessarily obviously know where they're going to end up, but you have a good idea. And then what's your strategy from there? Well, once you get them located, and you can kind of tell which way they're going to go if they're roosted near a field edge. Nine times out of ten, they're going to go to that field edge first off. 
there's a potential they'll work there and then they'll make a big loop around and potentially roost in the same tree. You just want to get close enough in to where you're they're killable right away, but not too close because they'll see you walking in. So you can't be like 10 feet away from the tree that they're roosted in. Does that make sense? Uh, you get, it's, and it's all situational too. And we've all made that mistake, haven't we? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know exactly where the roost tree is. I'm going to get right in there and you get at the base of that tree or maybe you get 20 yards from that tree and set up you go in with a headlamp on in the dark well that was the biggest mistake you could possibly make and then all of a sudden all hell breaks loose above you and maybe they come back maybe they don't or you could pull a me and be like that's a great spot there's no way they're roosted in that tree and then they and scare then, the shit out of you yep because there's like 40 of them up in that tree <laughs> yep. i'm like how are they even in that's there? the big thing where it's like <laughs> <laughs> you you could be like be deer hunting and those things my buddy Greg calls them jungle monsters. <laughs> He's like, dude, no he never had gone hunting before ever. Marine, you know, hardened, battle tested fella. And uh He's like, well, no one told me about the fucking jungle monsters that were out in the woods. <laughs> I about had a damn heart attack when one of those giant birds came crashing out of fucking trees. <laughs> they like, are loud. The they are oh, very loud. There is nothing graceful about a turkey. <laughs> oh, it's like a patio chair trying to land in a pine tree. It's <laughs> not, not great. <laughs> How many limbs can I take down today? Let's see. <laughs> they're clunky animals. They, they are. are just stupid. Mm-hmm. That's why I think they're called thunder chickens. Chickens That's are right. pretty dumb animals. These are just a bigger version of a chicken. The B-52 grouse. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have the the B fifty two bomber sticker. We're just dropping turkeys. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty clever. We tried to do a good job with that. I didn't get Greg's vision to come to life because I'm a crappy graphic designer, but I did my best. <laughs> it works. Some people get it. That sticker sold a lot of. I'm surprised at the trade show. People are scooping that one up, and and the other one. What's the other one we have? The uh, Jake Brink. The Jake Brink one, man. Yeah, yeah. I'll put it on the screen. This is the one. If you're if you're lo- if you're watching, you can see it on the screen, but. Uh, I did have the phone number up. The fo- if, you, if you're on Instagram, head to YouTube if you want to jump into the comments because we can't see those on the screen. Instagram is over there. You're far away. I can't touch the phone. And uh, if you want to call in, you've got turkey tactics, tips, stories, whatever. It's 262-757-4122. The phone lines are hot. They're open. Ring them up if you can, if it's not bath night, which is the usual excuse that I get. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't call on bath night. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. I get it. I'm not. I'm not mad. I'm just saying. Matt brought some new toys with him. I see a couple of cool things. What do you got cooking there, Matt? Got some turkey call. I see. So I got go the figure. top camera going here. You can, uh, you know, obviously this is a podcast first, but uh, sure. if you're watching along, you kind of see what Matt's doing here. So I got three calls. I brought just to have some fun with. Let the guys check them out. It's our double sided call, which we launched this year after a year and a half of demoing. So that one's there. These are the two ones we're demoing for this year. It's just a glass over slate and a different type of wood. And then glass over aluminum. Wait, glass over aluminum. Aluminum no, over aluminum glass. aluminum over glass. Yeah. My apologies. It's that bourbon or whatever that is. <laughs> I blame the Lord. <laughs> and then um, we're doing some carbon fiber strikers this year out of old arrow shafts. So that's But what kind of arrow shafts? Method archery. Boom. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> yes. Keep it in Wisconsin. Yep. Which does work amazingly well. Yeah. I was just playing with these in the carbon Both of us striker. were. And it was like, oh, well, you, you never know. Is someone going to try it out? I didn't hear any clucking or <laughs> purring. I was waiting for the rest of the rafters to kick in with me, but let's give her a go. <laughs> should, should we get you a rafter want... band going? <laughs> that really cuts into the air there. <laughs> Is this how they sound in the woods? I always just hear the same sounds. Just put your mouth call in now. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Putting shafts in my mouth over here. <laughs> ow! <laughs> Whoever's driving right now when they listen to this and be like, God, you guys, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I have one of those shaker gobblers I just because it's fun. <laughs> like, and the kids get really excited when I bust all these calls out. They get so excited about it. I have the I have an owl call, a crow oh, call. The, uh, the kids love the The gobbler owl call. Like, so many calls. So, like, the shot gobbling is just to, it, you're, you're doing some sort of predatory call or something to get them to... Gobble and shock, which yep. hence the term shock gobble. Slam a car door. And that's going to help hands. you locate these birds. 
But they are they literally get so freaked out. Like, oh, <laughs> you scared me. I and remember pulling up doing. to a job site once and uh, getting out of my work truck and just kind of bringing things in and slamming the back door and two of them teed off probably 30 yards into the woods. Never even knew they were there. I don't know if they had just woke up or they were on a afternoon stroll, slammed the door and they both teed off. <laughs> so goes to show you. And But then you can be out there with the nicest sounding call trying to get them to respond and they're quiet until they see your decoys and then they, they start to make a little bit of motion. They might You might hear them spit drum a little bit and that's it. Do you call uh, or do you wait until you hear some action? Because when we were out, you're like, you're not going to do all that shit here, Eric. No. I was like, what the heck? I don't have all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the time of the season. Like right now, just going out yesterday, I could have went out there with my truck and slammed my door and probably got them to gobble. But they were gobbling literally every every five to ten minutes. Is that because they're all horned up or what? Oh, yeah, they're all jacked up. Well, look at Anthony. Anthony's story. Anthony yeah, Heller. Yeah, but and, what are we talking about here? Jeez. Yeah. So you look at Anthony's story. Don't want to get the guy in trouble. Dude was out just walking, and he's got a red phone case, and they saw that red, and four of them come charging right at him. That's crazy. You know, and he did nothing well, other that, than just stand there. That was there. Uh, uh, our buddies at uh, Run and Gun here. They had a pretty crazy turkey. Uh, turkey. Oh, yeah, Justin. Yeah, Justin. Yeah. Justin. Yeah, Justin, Justin. Was, in Illinois, Illinois, just taking a walk, trying to get pictures of them, and they were just jag off. shed hunting, and the, and the turkeys were all up on him. He's like, shed hunting gone turkey wild or something like that or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it looked like they are so that that uh, we did that we ended up doing that meme a while back of like the office office space where they cook the kick the printer or the computer with the the buddies. <laughs> so that's like what nope. the Jakes do, and they you know you actually drop one, they all come up and start kicking the damn thing. Mm-hmm. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. Man, turkeys are weird animals. I just can't get over fucking weird they are. And th- I know they have beautiful colored feathers, but they're ugly animals. That's why you shoot them in the face with a shotgun. They're just disgusting. Nothing. Looking. That's the that's the only bad part about killing one early in the morning when there's dew and they start flopping. Like turkeys are ugly, but you ever see a wet turkey wet? Oh, <laughs> flopping in the disgusting. dew? Yeah. I mean, you can't. Even the fans, this, they never quite look the same. <laughs> that one that I killed a couple of years ago in my tennis shoes in a rainstorm. It's raining sideways. I shot that thing. Ducks look prettier. I mean, it's wow. That thing was an ugly looking bird. <laughs> You still took some good pictures somehow. Yeah, I shook you, like, it off as best it off I could. Or something? You get a uh, hair dryer out? No. <laughs> Leaf uh, blower? <laughs> those <laughs> were work. from a distance, and I spread the fan out, and it was still pouring rain sideways when I did it. So, Greg, what's your favorite thing about turkey hunting? Getting up early, watching the sun come up, listening to all the birds, and then the turkeys wake up and all the noises they make. That's your favorite part? Having, is having, the same thing with deer hunting? Having deer come wandering in. Yeah, we had that, that doe come by. Yep. I mean, I've had encounters with coyotes, and I whacked a coyote, and a decoy spread once too. They just came it's charging. A small in. game tag. At that point, uh, I still had a small game. I don't know. That I, I just took care of business. <laughs> Landowner didn't want them on there. <laughs> what do you do with the coyote after you kill it? What do you do with that? Do Bury it. <laughs> it's the, the, this yeah. time of year. This time of year, it they're they're you blowing their winter coats. coat. Yeah. They're they're pretty much a mess. They look mangy. Yeah, they're real mangy, and that one was real mangy. But I had two of them sneak in. One snuck down wind. I turned around and looked, and he was eyeballing me from about 40 yards. He caught my wind and booked it. And the other one was dumb enough to come upwind of me and was too tempted by the decoys. And he actually knocked a decoy off the, the stake. And as he went past, I just drew up left-handed and swung and shot with a three-and-a-half-inch mag and dumped him. He didn't like that, did he? Well, <laughs> let's just say he didn't have the guts to do that again. <laughs> oh, my God. But you didn't, so after that, like, you didn't have any turkeys come by. They came out of the woods. I knew where they did, were. Did they were hung up. Yeah, I was like, that. well, do I let the coyote run around or do I wait for the turkeys? Uh, the turkeys, I could hear them gobbling off, you know, two, 300 yards into the woods. And after I shot, then they came out to see what was going on because I heard the boom and they, I heard them gobble after I shot, and then they ran out, and they stood at the end of the field looking around going, what's going on? You know, and turkey decoys off the stake, and there's one other decoy just kind of <laughs> looking looking puzzled, you know, and then there's dead a big coyote. Yeah, there's a dead coyote, and there's a six-foot-tall dumb guy that standing turkey, in that the decoy That turkey just killed a coyote? <laughs> we got to hang out with that guy. <laughs> well, they, they were hoping that that gunshot was going to be a... One of their buddies dead. They Let's go, go stomp Tom's ass. Let's go stomp yeah, <laughs> Totally. And Come on, guys. To be quite honest with you, it was like six gobblers that came out first, and the hens were behind. So it was like, yeah, it <laughs> was They're just on. rolling deep. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. 
Yeah, they're they're a weird animal, aren't they? Fifty Cent end up in the club over there on that <laughs> field. What's that clip that you got? The work, show me that farm. Oh, from the office. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Show me that farm. I sat on that one for a long time. Yeah, because you couldn't freaking screen nope. record because you don't have a damn iPhone. Nope, just an Android. <laughs> Get Step over to the dark here. side, Matt. Over to the dark side. One day. One day. Oak Tree Dreams, by the way, I see all your posts in here. I'm not doing a good job of sharing them on the screen, but we do have your dirty hen calls here. And we've been putting them in our mouths and using them. <laughs> it's a mouth Dirt, call. Dirty hen and Separate dirty calls, mouth. not all the same call in all of our mouths. <laughs> here, try this one. <laughs> Ooh, I like this one. <laughs> Is that hams? <laughs> <laughs> Slight. <laughs> like a bit of bush and then some hams. <laughs> Oh, yeah. did, you see, did you see Go Wild? Aftertaste of Malort. <laughs> Go Wild was selling uh, bush cans for turkey calls. All right. You April need some Fools. sandpaper? We can actually some. try it. Or we need some sandpaper. Oh, yeah. This well, you, once you grab that, that's going to get sandpaper while, while you're here with the sandpaper. That needs a, a, a touch up there. Your weathered oak call. So Matt, for those that don't know, Matt Strime here, um, not only is he host of the OKS Fisher podcast, but he's also the owner or the co-owner of Weathered Oaks Game Calls, and he manufactures these... Uh, these pot calls here. These here pot calls. Can I talk about your pot calls? Sure. That you make? How do you do it? I yeah, mean, well, don't you give the, the yeah, Who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all hand spun in house, all in Wisconsin here. And everyone's, you know, like I said, done by us. They don't leave the, you know, don't leave us until they sound good. Something we would use uh, in the woods ourselves. And, and engineering that sound is kind of tricky. It took a long time. To you're sell, you're out. selling sound more than you're selling call true like the ability to make it produce that sound is the hard part yep there's a lot more i am not scientifically smart by any means but there's a lot of physics and airflow and all that other stuff that i couldn't even explain to you because i don't understand it but it we go until it sounds good and we kind of figure out what was going on a lot of failures you got a wall of shame so <laughs> that's like a musician that well i don't i couldn't tell you about the musical notes but i can play a freaking guitar mm-hmm. and the ones that have talent have talent plain and simple Yeah, that's a nice loud call, too. That's double-sided. It's going to hear a bunch of weird sounds in the background. I'm just condition into one up. Greg, doing that on a, on a hams can? <laughs> getting there. I gotta get wow, one of these. it's pretty that quiet. That hams can sounds better than the... <laughs> 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 I'm going to bet the kick in the shorts. <laughs> where, where, do people, where do people go to buy your calls? Uh, we sell them at weatheroaksgamecalls.com. Um, kind of a lengthy website name, but... Okay. That's what it is. Yeah. You got to have it. Yeah. It's rather be overstated than understated, not know where the hell to go. Yeah. I don't yeah. know about that sanding sound in the background right now. <laughs> it's just getting warmed up. It's just Greg Fine. doing Greg things. Yeah. Greg's a tinkerer. Give me a yawn. He's the Tinkerbell of the podcast. He's, trying, he's trying to. Tinkerbell. He's trying to take my business away from me. Guys, look, you can just do a beer can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can. Get you my can. Hmm. It's pretty muted. I don't know. Yeah, it's way muted. We got to pull up Ted's. Might cents. have better luck just painting that can red and shaking it around. <laughs> <laughs> I might paint, it, paint it red and put it on a stick. <laughs> Turn it into a decoy. Yep. <laughs> this is like a bit of a beginner. This is not like we're. I know I want to have some other guests on to talk turkey hunting, but I, I'm trying to look at the comments to see what else we want to do here. Oh, look at that. It's all sanded up. Mm-hmm. You think I can do a good job now? Possibly. It's like the opera. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Should I do a quick tutorial for you? Yeah. Watch and learn there, maestro. 90. That's straight 90? Yep. Nin- 90 With your degree. hand kind of on the side, straight 90. Tip it about 5 degrees forward. So make it 85. And then pull. And then you do circles. Try to find that break point. Do I want to tilt it more now? Or? Nope. Still straight 90. A little bit. So, I don't know, 100 degrees. So, you got to just kind of feel it out. Mm-hmm. Yes. You just got to keep J working stroke. with it. J-stroke, circles. 
Oh, you're like legitimately drawing the J. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's totally drawing the J. J. Take a J. <laughs> well, that's that's literal. Literal. <laughs> the letter J. Today is brought to you by the letter J. <laughs> you don't have to do the top you know part what? of the J. Yes. <laughs> Screw you guys and <laughs> in hand. This is bullshit. <laughs> hey, do a J. Wow, that's that's that you're doing too much. You gotta do a little less. Do a little less. We gotta do you something. Gotta do something. Do something. Do a cursive J. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we're calling those fancy turkeys. <laughs> those highbrow turkeys. <laughs> the old rafter birds. <laughs> yeah. A whole good though. Is that okay? It's Hunter logo on it's really effing it up. <laughs> no, that's good. It means it's getting used. Yeah, that sounds better, Greg. It really was a user error. It's not it, your call's fault. Every call is a little different, too. you got to find that sweet yeah, spot. Yeah, there's a like sweet spot break. in there. It, you know, sometimes it, some of them sound better in the middle. Others sound better towards the edge. you got to sand them up and condition them and then start working. <clears throat> The turkeys are like pretty stupid, right? So it doesn't matter. I'm just kidding. They, no, they <laughs> are. <laughs> they're they know you're in the woods. They're super easy to kill. Oh yeah, super easy. <laughs> Until I mean, you try to kill one. They have yep. a literal bird brain. Am I not mistaken here? But they turn that whole brain on for the turkey season. So they before use, and like, after, they're like, duh. and then yeah. yeah, you can't. Yeah, just during the season, they superpowers. I mean, it's kind of mm. like the rut. Turkey you know, you're superpowers. Hunting, you're gonna. You're gonna <laughs> <laughs> You know how they say we only use 10% of our brains? Well, I think we only use 10% of our hearts. <laughs> and turkeys, by the way, they use their whole fucking brain. <laughs> Might be small, but it's mighty. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their whole brain's silly and shit. I'm not that worried about it. No, but I've not done a ton of turkey. I've went once with Greg. And it Sorry. Wasn't, it wasn't favorable. No, it, it was probably... You it know. was a fine time, but there was no... Except for, except for the, the fact that you had to get up early. I get crabby about. Mm-hmm. See, you. Re- I mean, we do a lot of turkey hunts where we don't roost the birds the night before, and we'll get out there right when it's getting light and just do a couple calls at the truck and hear where they're coming from, or we make a play. I'm just going to make a play. <laughs> yep. And that's more fun anyway. Yeah, you get to sleep in a little bit more. Right? right? Five minutes at least. Yeah, if I can get some breakfast on an early hunt, that's what's up. Bre- get- breakfast equals a bathroom break. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's why you bring the saddle. <laughs> Why are you hung out of that tree for turkeys? It's not what you think. It's a sky dump. <laughs> Give me a wide berth. Trust me. <laughs> Stay back. Oh lord. <laughs> hunting don't, the. Don't I put get, it out. Don't put I out break out from Harold. poison ivy really easily. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, no, that's that's our buddy Luke with publicly oh, challenged. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I see him, he's got some other rash from something that he's touched <laughs> in the woods. It's from all that cool stuff that he eats. <laughs> Seriously. He's, he's building like, his immune he's system. He's like scratching his neck at ATA. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? It's like that uh, episode from Something About Mary where he's like, <laughs> got all those fucking shoes. Except it's like, Luke, what'd you... Ah, oh, it's poison ivy. Ah, yeah, it's poison oak. Oh, I got a reaction to this. I'm like, Jesus Christ, last time I saw you, had something else going on. <laughs> so they're just freaking itching his forearm. Like, <laughs> It's a sunburn. <laughs> That'll be the next one. It might be. Give him a couple days. I got plenty of that in Florida. Luke's a good guy. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Nice guy. I feel bad. The first time I like met him in person, he drove me back to my hotel after ATA. And like I think I had some like hypoglycemic moment from traveling and not eating or something weird. And I like I was like, Whoa, hey man, I'm not doing so good here. And I'm in his car and I'm like, I don't really know this guy. I'm like, oh, no, seriously, something's fucking wrong with me. I don't I don't know. We might have to go to the hospital. I don't, and I like was having a hard time. I was like, the walls were closing in <laughs> on my eyes, and I was like, this isn't happening before. I really can't explain what's going on. I'm really sorry. This is not normal. Like I'm not on drugs. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. And then my mother-in-law, who's like a nurse or whatever, I she's like, it sounds like you're hypoglycemic. I was like, ah, maybe. I don't know. She's like, what'd you eat? And I like like could remember at that point, but it was kind of weird for a minute. He's like, oh, I think it's all those VOCs from the carpeting in that freaking building. <laughs> well, you might be right. I don't know. <laughs> those voluntary organic compounds, man. They'll really get you. <laughs> get to watch it for those. But they do. They lay all that fresh carpet. It's like a, it's like a couple football fields worth. And you're like, <sighs> just breathing in those bright white lights, and you're just all disoriented. You're not straight your life, man. That shit will get you. Hashtag struggles. <laughs> <laughs> struggle bus. Yeah, hashtag struggle bus. <laughs> you guys have done trade shows. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not fun, not fun at all. So no turkey hunting in the morning. Breakfast would be great. I think that sounds nice. But other than that, like, what do you do when you get the bird? Then what? Then bring, you then you go have breakfast. Well, no, you can bring breakfast out in the stand with you. You can. We do that all the time. Like nope. what? Like a granola bar? 
No, like oh, burrito. Make, ca- make camp bur- food. Like you know, boil some water, and they can't smell. So you know, the they cold, can smell, but the they, they might be attracted going. to whatever you got going on. Because you know yeah, they usually, are they are rafters. We do that. We'll have cigars. You know, it's, it's a good time. We like turkey out in that way. I think that's what I've seen about duck hunting. I've seen people like make eggs yep. in the uh, duck blind. Mm-hmm. I don't like that's forget cool deer part. hunting. This looks way better. <laughs> you can like shoot it the probably shit. is. Like, come on, this you, looks great. You get to shoot a whole lot more. Even if you're good, you but still shoot a lot more. But that's the thing. I went duck more. hunting and I had a like I didn't I had a fine time, but there was no like nothing happened. Wrong place, wrong time. It's just yeah, the way he's it like, was. Oh, Scott Ford, a good friend of mine, uh has a guide service at the time. I don't know if he's still doing it, but he um he took me out and he had a whole decoy set up. We went to Kincaid and He's like, well, they just aren't here today. They were here yesterday. They're not here today, and and therefore we didn't have like I didn't even get to shoot at a single damn duck. But he's like, that's a, I don't even know. He's calling all these duck names. I'm like, how the f- do you know what that is? It's flying at like 90 miles per hour. But if it's 90, it's away. usually a blue wing or a green wing. Yeah, teal. but he's just calling I mean, all stuff off. I'm like, is that good? Is that bad? Like I have no. <laughs> Can I context. shoot that? Like <laughs> what is that? Like that? well, no, no one then likes the coots. I'm like, what? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, a couple guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of dogs t- named Cooter. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's a lot of dogs with the name Cooter. Yeah. That's an interesting dog name. No, Scott Ford, shout out, love. Yeah, Tons and Sportsman. I think they're friends. <coughs> um, yeah, so, I, but I, so I'm like a bad omen, though, too. I, I went rabbit hunting for the first time a couple, like a month or two ago. It was two months ago. Not a single rabbit was seen. You could see their tracks going to brush piles. You knew they were there, but they were not coming out. The snow was super deep. Take me fishing. You. It's me. It's like, you. People are like, and then people <laughs> apologize to me. Sorry, I'm sorry, Eric. I'm sorry. I'm like, no, no, it's it's me. I'm the problem. It's me. And here we go, quoting Tim. Hey, some bad time luck. in a row. We'll, we'll get you out of turkey this year. Let's we'll mm-hmm. get you out of turkey. But I'm I'm also got the, I got the, the late leftover here. season, so it'll be kind of tricky, right? That's a dope. I don't know, man. Uh, it's like, better to call and decoy them later in the season, I think. I, I love late season hunting. I mean, I don't I'm love the act of it because it's hot and buggy and green, you but the turkeys seem to cooperate. We, we kill a lot more birds in the late season between 10 and 2, to be completely what honest. What do you mean 10 and 2? Like how you're shooting? 930, <laughs> 9.30 is the best time to start. Because that's when they break off. And then they're willing to come to calls yep. and separate from the other yep. toms. Here it is. See. Maybe we shouldn't pour this over ooh. technology. Pour some over my technology, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Danger. Well, um, Danger close. <laughs> my so like my what I'm doing the last couple of years is different than what you're doing because I can get out before I go to work. So I can go like before school. So super early. Mm-hmm. So what I do is the public spots that I'm hunting get really pressured on a Saturday, right? Like so I'm like Wednesday morning. Tuesday night, I'm like, I'm gonna go roost these birds, figure out exactly where they are. I got my cameras out right now, trying to figure out when they like to go here, when they like to go here, so I can set up right off the roost and try to whack one before the weekend pressure comes in because you know you and I both know it doesn't take long for these birds to get educated mm-hmm. and figure out guys with decoys calling on the edge of the field. So like I'm doing like the opposite. I'm like hunting for like an hour in the morning trying to make it happen <laughs> and not have to hunt on Saturday and do an all day breakfast kind of thing, <laughs> even though I want to do that. <laughs> and now you're making me feel bad because I I, I hunt differently. I, I take it more or less seriously. I go Wait, so do you ha- take it more or less seriously? Yes. More or less. <laughs> more, or less. <laughs> more or less seriously. I, t- I take it, well, I, I, everybody wants to kill a bird, but I don't put trail cameras out for turkeys. I kind of understand a lot of the layouts of the land where they're going to be. I like to go out there and challenge myself, Be you know, either get out there real early, listen to where they're coming down, try to, I don't sit in a spot more than 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm always moving. Hope they took five steps a different direction than I was thinking they were going to. I want to back out and swing around and try to cut them off another spot. So if you only got, I mean, I hunt before work too, but yeah, I, so I can get away with that with my job because I don't, you know, need, I don't think I need to be there before eight thirty most days. I can push it probably nine o'clock, and if that's the case. Like I, even my boss, I know he'll go out turkey hunting in the morning and he'll come in. He's like, oh, I didn't see anything or I got one already. I'm like, you got a tur- you got a turkey already? Like well, what? <laughs> what are you talking about, man? Yeah, I had breakfast and everything. I think <laughs> my last sky dump. No, I'm just kidding. I think my last five birds have killed were before school at like seven thirty. That's, That's like school nice. starts at seven thirty. Yep. There's something a bit like to to getting up early. I, I do ha- appreciate it. I'm just usually up so damn late that some of that stuff is hard. But 
you'll fit in perfect in turkey season because later seasons you'll be up till 9 30 10 o'clock roosting birds and then you're out at two o'clock in the morning to get out to your spot so <laughs> two o'clock in the morning <laughs> yeah it gets light by, it gets light by 4 30 so i mean i have a little bit to drive for some of my spots every day it's getting lighter earlier that's like when we went fishing with him he's like picked us up at two in the morning or whatever i was like what? It's only an hour and a half earlier than I normally wake up, so it's not too bad. He was a little bit of a bitch about it too. By the that was way. fine. We caught a fish before the sun even came up. <laughs> we that did. Was the first one to catch. We had fish. we had four Hello. bites before the sun came up. <laughs> That's good. We didn't um, even have all the rods in the water. I do <laughs> like seeing the skyline in Milwaukee before the sun comes up. Like that's a that's cool the nicest thing. part of Milwaukee, right there. Mm-hmm. Is that skyline early in the morning? Being twenty miles being away, 20, <laughs> being <laughs> being anywhere from one to ten miles <laughs> offshore. <laughs> Yes, it sir. Look cool. Yeah, yeah. When you're up before the rest of the world is up, it's a nice feeling to have. Well, last year, that later season, the fifth season, I had on my way to work. I had been seeing these two toms out in this field right off the highway, and they were there almost every day. And I ended up swinging in and getting permission to hunt the spot. And um, I hunted the next morning, and the birds didn't show. I didn't hear them, didn't see them, and I was like, "Well, man, maybe they busted out." And I was like, "No, I think they're probably just like on a little circuit." If they weren't here today, I could try it again tomorrow. So for whatever reason, I think it was our stupid cats, which allowed me to hunt, but I think they woke <laughs> me up super early and Those I could not cats. fall back asleep. And I was going to get up to go anyway. So I got up like way earlier than I normally would. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sneak out there. I'm going to go set up anyway. So I got out there and where I thought these turkeys would be roosting, I realized they were not there because I'm walking out and there's like two big oak trees right in the, like almost the middle of the field. And that's where, where the farm road goes across this little waterway. So it's the only way to get to this backfield where I wanted to set up. And like, I can see their silhouettes and they're roosted up there. I'm like, well, son of a bitch, I got to walk right between, like I have to walk underneath the trees to get to anywhere I could set up. Otherwise it's all open, but they had like their heads tucked and I was like, time to Time to get sneaky. So I <laughs> crept underneath them, but it was so early. You know, it was like an hour and 30 minutes before sunrise. They're, they're used to hearing deer and coons. Yeah, and so, that, so I was like, I'll just creep under them. So I crept under them, set up my blind, popped up a whole blind 60 yards away down the field line, and I gave it a couple calls right as they started gobbling, and they literally flew right into the decoys, mm-hmm. and the hunt was over in like no. within minutes yeah. of shooting light. That's crazy. But it's just lucky as hell. That's another reason you got to get up early, too. Because if you would have walked out there 40 minutes later, where it's still dark out, those birds are up and looking. Oh, yeah. They yeah. get up before you yeah, know they ever check noise. Yep, the whole, like, surveying everything below them so they know where it's safe to land. So you got to get out there early if you're going to hunt roosted birds. Hmm. Good to know. Dude, Greg, how much bourbon did you pour in this glass? <laughs> Enough for you Thank and gosh. for Matt. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think you missed a glass here. <laughs> Holy cow. You said you were thirsty. I got my first Tom this past Saturday, hunted them for 10 seasons. Wow. That's I, a nice that's bird. That's crazy. 10 inch beard, 11. See, that means nothing to me. I, I have no idea about the beard and the spurs. Like, it means I have 22 no pounds. clue. But if nothing else, like look at the animal. weight. Yeah, 22 that, pounds is a good bird. My that, first bird was 24 pounds. That's colossal. And that had an 11 and a half inch beard, and it had like one inch spurs. It wasn't very big on the spurs. So the beards just grow longer. As depends on the season, you know. If, the, well, if like it's, it's a cold, hard season, like they like, get beard like, rods. Like a deer, everyone's a little different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what's this that I've been seeing about turkey stones? Is that with the rocks that these dumb things yep. eat up? Because mm-hmm. that's how they did. Like they don't have teeth, so they they grind around in their gullet. Yep. Or whatever you want to call it. It's like a corn grinder. Mm-hmm. Everything just... I hear about these birds makes me think they're so freaking weird. But they're delicious. Though. But they, I just thought they. I thought like they ate the stones by accident because they're pecking the ground like that nope. dumb bird from Moana. Is it a gizzard or gullet? What is it? G- yeah, it's a one gizzard. Of the two. Is it a gizzard? gizzard? It's a gizzard. gizzard. Yep. Put little pebbles in there. And a... Yep. Uh, that's what everyone have a vodka gimlet. <laughs> that's what every bird I thought you were just complaining yeah, about having a glass does. full of, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about doing that, though, cleaning them out. And... That's what some guys have been doing. There's a guy uh, that that's actually pretty friendly with our brand. Um, field of t- I think it's Field the Table. I've had duck gizzard before, and them. it's not terrible. It's tough. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying eating it. No, we're talking I'm saying stones. pull the stones well, off. Well, no, out. I've actually... And they put in my little, buddy like, actually cleaned little, them when we like ate mason them. mason jars. Yeah, little, well, yeah, not mason jars, but like these little tiny be cool. little mm-hmm. cups, and they have like the way that I saw it. They had the beard, the spurs, and then they had this little like shelf on their uh, hanger for like the little... Uh, oh, a vial? A vial mm-hmm. for the turkey stones. I would just and turkey c- stones in different regions look different because they're eating different rocks. Mm-hmm. 
You can find some cool wherever, stuff too, like an old scene, I don't know, YouTube or whatever years ago. There, somebody found a diamond out of a diamond ring in there. It, Holy it's shit. About, it's about that size. I, so that's I, what they're. they're well, how did that at. farmer lose that one diamond? <laughs> I could see a turkey, you know, or a chicken pecking that up because he had a roll in the How the hell are they? <laughs> <laughs> the chances. That's wild. That's really cool. Yeah, so there's. So do you, do you guys collect? So uh, Wicked North. Uh, if you go to wickednorth.com, good friends of ours, they have uh, the the little, I don't even know what the hell it's called. They have this little plastic thing that you can put the beard on so you can hang and display your beard in a really neat kind of way. I don't know if anyone else has that. I always, just take, my, I always just take the shotgun, shotgun shell, shell, cut it in half, and I hang my beard from the shotgun shell. That's pretty I cool. Attach it to the. That's a nice way. I got a whole bunch of fans sitting in the basement that are not on plaques. So you can display how your many fans, plaques can you put up? Your like, spurs, how many fans can you put up? Your your beard and the stones. You got four way. I can't. Have you seen it? I can't see Where? my hands. I can see my hands. I start with my thumb and hey, then man. I can't. I can't. You know what I mean? Like this doesn't. I can't get that finger. <laughs> <laughs> got weird. Sorry, but anyway, you got, you got four ways to de- decorate these birds, <laughs> and I don't know what to do with my hands right now. I don't turkey know. decor. Let's talk about your turkey decor. Turkey decor. Like who's that? Doesn't have like a mounted bird? There's a lot of That's ways. I to think do it. I think mounted birds look flipping cool. Uh, I've always wanted bird? one, but like freeze dried head. I don't know where you put it. They're expensive. What? What do you mean a oh, yeah, head they do it. a freeze dried head. They're expensive to do. So they take who's a head. They. Tax. They're listening. <laughs> they are listening. <laughs> if they do a freeze dried head. Yeah, the taxidermist. Do you have turkey fans in your house? I have a couple yeah. of fans, but I don't have them up. They're just kind of sitting is there. It only fans, or yeah, it's, it's only fans. <laughs> lonely fans. <laughs> lonely fans. I think Not you, only, I just lonely. Right I think you <laughs> gave me one or two of your. I did give you your that, old fans that, for feathers. That to paint la- on. the last old, one I got. Old fans. That one actually kind of had cool tail feathers because it had like strips of copper on. Yeah, I don't know if you remember looking at that. Yeah. You spread it out, and it had like bands of copper on the ends. Really cool. Oh, it was a pretty neat looking one. <clears throat> I shot a bird once that had white stripes coming up half the tail fans. Yep. Little like white featherings, and those things looked super cool when you like pull them out. And the one did, I you s- do art with these things too. You painted, yeah. yeah painted, that's why I gave him. I gave him that fan. Or? I've not done an entire fan once. That'd be or nice. Not done it yet, canvas. but that's what I want to do. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. But we throw them in turkey calls too for people. What the feathers? Mm-hmm. How do you? Yeah, like the one you did glass, for Drew. Yeah, the there? one I did for Drew turned out. I like that one. Tree? Yep, that one's sharp. How have we not got any callers yet? What are you guys doing tonight, listeners? Sleeping. Recent turkey. Freeze dried is rough. <laughs> I mean rafters. <laughs> uh, hold on. Tony had something. Scroll up. Oh, he's asking any early questions. season tips mentoring this weekend. Tony, I think I don't think you need to work as hard as you think you do with early season. They're, they're as stupid as they're acting right now, and it could be because of the warm weather, and it might change because of the cold front we got coming this weekend. But I don't think you got to work as is hard it open as you this think. weekend. Youth for is for youth is youth and learn to hunt. Like I was asked to help with the learn to hunt for BHA, and I just couldn't do it. I didn't get my crap together in time and vacation and all the other stuff. Do so you have a tag? But you're not going to go out. No, no, I don't have a tag for oh, for, for that. Like you you would take and men- yeah. yeah, well. Yeah. You no, can also there's do, a mentor hunt. There's that's a mentor a hunt too, thing. and that that's for anyone. That's that's got to be in the program. That was two weekends ago, I think. That's any age, but it's uh, it was last weekend. Was it last weekend? Yeah, but there's a BH. So BHA, it's different. Like they can pretty much almost do whatever they want. Brock explained it to me, but they have a BHA is putting on one with AKA the DNR the right real now. Rosie. Right, the real Rosie. <laughs> that's right, that Brock. Mentor, if you're listening, that but mentor. anyway, you can mentor. You can mentor adults during a BHA uh, so learn was, hunt. This was through NWTF, one of our local sure. branches. Sure. So the, it, it's all. the same kind of deal where if it's some type, if it's a conservation organization working with the DNR, they can pretty much kind of pick a weekend to do it, and and on property to and, and go, and that's what they did. So I don't know if they've got four or five people that they're mentoring and varying in age, probably from. I, I'm guessing high schooler on up to middle aged person. Mm-hmm. Middle aged persons mm-hmm. are smart individuals, right? I'd like to get your take on this because early season, like now, I feel like more important than calling and decoys is just seeing what the turkeys do because they kind of do the same thing over and over in their big groups. 
fly down, they walk this field line to here, they do this. So like as far as an early season hunt, I think it would be really beneficial in a, the next few days is just to kind of figure out where they kind of like to be. And I think it almost benefits you to not call or decoy sometimes and just sit where they tend to walk by Quietly. because, man, I've had times where I've tried to even just do very minimal calling and those hens will just slowly pull the toms further and further and further away when they're all grouped up like that. Mm -hmm. And then most of the time, those toms are not going to peel off on their own till later seasons, fourth mm -hmm. season, something like that. You, what do you think? Yes. You also got to remember, too, you're defying nature when you're turkey hunting. <clears throat> so usually Tom fans up. Hens you make come, it sound really cool when you say you're defying nature. But I use on. big words every once in a while. <laughs> it is like Sounds the educated. opposite. <clears throat> it is. So so Tom, you know, all puffed out, showing all its feathers, acting as big as it can. It's trying to act like the most dominant bird. Hens will come to the most dominant bird. We are trying to defy nature by simulating a hen by calling and have those toms come into the hen. So you got to remember that too. So it's You explained this to me in our car ride. I'm glad you're saying it, it again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's one of those weird things. But going back to early season, I always like to think early season is when you can get away with more decoys because they're still in their groups. They're going to think it's weird if 15 birds fly down in a field and you have one hen sitting there. So if you're going to put decoys out, put a couple, three, four, six, however many you got, or if you're not going to put decoys out, I would suggest sitting farther back off of that fence line because mm -hmm. I think I, I don't know who I explained this to once, but if you have nothing set out in the field and there's birds in the field and you're calling away, that bird's going to look out, turn around and go away. It doesn't see anything. It's like when somebody's screaming in a parking lot, you poke your head out and you don't see anybody screaming, but you know somebody's there. Nope, not, not going to work for me to turn around and go away. If you set up into the woods some, you can coax them into the woods because they're like, that sounds farther away than the field edge. Let's poke my head in and get a look around in there. That's how I like to target them early season. Is not necessarily If you don't have that huge, because you're pretty nimble, you said, like you're a little more nomadic. Are you setting up six, seven, eight decoys, or are you going back? Like, what is your actual strategy? So my actual strategy when I go out, whether it's the first week or the last week, is I have one hen decoy feeding, and I have my tom fan. And I don't use it to reap because I'm not in shape to do that. But I'll set up, you know, if I'm working a bird I know is, you know, 200 yards to the north, I set up 200 yards away from it, 200 yards to the south, I'm going to put my, or not 200 yards, 20 yards to the south, I'm going to put my tom decoy. Because usually if the tom separates off and he comes poking his head up, he's going to see that and he's going to hold up. But I'm trying to get him to hold up in my shooting lane. I'm trying to get him to poke his head up and <clears throat> investigate the, the scene. He's going to see that Tom, you know, 20 yards off. He's going to hold up, and he's going to be right in my window. And it's, it's, it's all situational, too. So, like, if you have big field edges, big open fields, and you got a tractor path, like 15-yard tractor path that is the only way through, set up on there. They're, they're eventually going to come. Mm -hmm. And then early season, be patient because they're, they're not used to it. They're not used to all the calling. They do hear you no matter what. And they will eventually come to that sound. So, this is great. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, you're taking notes. This might be a dumb <laughs> question. You can't rifle hunt a turkey, right? No, no, Damn not it. here, not in this state. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, how fun would that be? I would just feel like sniping from 300 yards away. <laughs> it wouldn't gotcha be that fun. <laughs> I mean, speak for yourself. <laughs> Got him. There's something about gotcha. being a sniper Good. that is all right. Very head fun. shooting a turkey from 250 <laughs> would be kind of fun. Yes. Now, <laughs> just like a 50 cal, 500 yards. <laughs> well, I guess I'm not eating that one. <laughs> oh boy that's <laughs> turkey burger <laughs> yeah that's not gonna work though no. but i think like the little things you're talking about like how far you'd like what is the farthest shot you're gonna take it's bird shot right it's turkey it's load shot I, it's I, turkey I, load but if you got your gun pattern for it you're using like you know the expensive tss stuff you can get a 60 yard shot in no problem i mean really even, even with lead and a 300 a, that's a poke with a shotgun a it is but you got you got like uh, are you like I've only ever shot shotguns with iron sights. Are you you guys got fancy red dots or nope. scopes on your shotguns? I shotgun? literally have electrical tape holding a like minor little glow stick on. Yeah. You are an OKS hunter. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are one of us. Just I need forget. that little fiber optic <laughs> to catch a little light, and that's all you need. One bead, line it up, and let it rip. Tater that's all chip. you need, comma one bead. <laughs> but real forty yards. I mean, yeah, you can yeah. all day long easily. Yards. 
And and uh, I know, like, I'm just kind of railing off all the random things that I see come about this stuff. But like, choke is you've written blog articles about choking up. Yeah, I mean, I've I've played. I don't around with. It. Well, chokes will change constriction and and the pattern of where your shot flies, or how it comes out of the barrel. So you can get pretty proficient with a pretty tight choke and the right ammunition and the right gauge, and you know, it's all it's all how you build it, basically. So, and it takes money to practice and, and find the yeah, right nowadays, stuff. Huh? I mean, well, even before, I mean, yeah. a good box of turkey loads is pretty pretty expensive. And then you go looking at chokes. I mean, you can get by with a $40 choke or you can go as high as a $120 choke. Is one better than the other with one particular brand of ammunition? Yeah. So you, you work and try to find things that are in your budget you know, if you want to buy a cheaper Carlson choke and work with Winchester ammo, which is decent ammo, that's what I shoot. And I've I've shot it out of that same Carlson choke that's designed to work with that Winchester ammo. I think that was a sixty dollar choke. The box of ammunition was twenty five bucks for ten or whatever it was, which it's is like fifty now. Yeah, yeah. It so I was smart and bought some while they were cheaper. I think I've got three boxes of them. Um I'm very comfortable out to 45 yards easily. Can I do a 50-yard shot? Yeah. Things start to fall apart after a certain distance. You just need one BB. You only need one BB in the right place. Yeah. 50 bucks for shot. Yeah. Yep, for 410. Yeah, well, you're, you're paying. You're, so that's that's, that's four four ten four ten shells are just out of this world for what but they you're are. Pay, you're paying for those three letters. Yeah, TSS. Yeah, what is that? That's why. What does that mean? Is that the brand? Yeah, TSS. Tungs, it's it's tungsten a tungsten. Of, uh, yeah, and tungsten. Is, beads. The beads are tungsten. Mm-hmm. Yep. Super heavy. Yep. yep. But for four ten, they're one of the only ones. Am I right? That I mean, are making. Turkey no, load no. for 410? What, Foxtrot, I think, makes them? Winchester I think it's pretty was, hard to come by. Winchester was making them, but I think they sold out quick because it's a budget round. Mm-hmm. Uh, Federal was making them. Well, Federal makes the TSS load also. But it's just because it's such a niche product and not a lot of people are shooting it. A lot Supply more Supply and demand. A lot more than, you know, years ago. Yeah. Now it's like the cool thing. Yeah, the it is, it's yeah. it's the cool thing. Well, it's what, like why is that the cool chasing thing? a deer with a stick bow. I'm, I mean, gonna, I'm gonna chase a turkey with a 410. Really? Yeah, there's no recoil. Like, and if you ever shot a 410, well, they're a blast to shoot. Mm-hmm. They're recoil, super fun. Yeah. Recoil hurts. Yeah. That was always a rabbit and the grouse gun. Was yeah, my dad's or yep. my dad's. Who I think he got it from his dad. But it was just the the break action 410. One we shot. Always, I always killed more with that than my 12 gauge because you knew you only had one shot, so you aimed a little yeah. harder. <laughs> <laughs> That was the the chipmunk killer and uh, the shooter of many other birds that shouldn't have been shot, probably. <laughs> hey, back to chokes though. The one thing I noticed, I've missed more birds at fifteen yards and under. If you oh got yeah, because well, it's, tight it's, it's literally a two, yeah. two rifle, yeah. like the not, it's not it has a it, rifle, but it, no, has it, it just like, hadn't had it its chance to, yet. Exp- to the the, the shot got string it. hasn't expanded out. Yeah, there's been plenty of times where they're like shoot, shoot. I'm like, I gotta let him get fifteen more yards away, otherwise I got like. That big of a window. Yeah, yeah. So at forty, you might so have a you, pattern like this. Where you aim at? at ten, I mean, you're like, it's this. like that. You aim for like base of the neck. Base the of the neck. Yeah, right where the, the, the feathers, bottom, where the, the feathers, feathers meet end. the skin. Yep. Right where it's red. Put your bead right there. Yep. Let some go up and some go down. And mm-hmm. You just trash that shit. Let it rip. You try to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suck at. That, like bird, sh- like you take me clay sh- shooting or sports clays, and I I'm not good at it. This, got, is, this, this is nothing like no, these are no, not moving. moving. No, that's these are not moving. That's another thing I suck at. Let's you talk literally about for a second. I, the best thing I can tell you is what's really going to screw you up is if you try to put the bead right where the head is. You literally just look at the head and instinctively aim. You point at the head and you squeeze the trigger, and it's all over. Don't think about it. Don't even think about it. Thirty yards, you have this big. Don't, of a... don't do it. <laughs> do, do, we gotta do, do more. Let me that. tell you what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> How is no one called in on this episode? You gotta be kidding me, guys. We're just that good. Shocked about it. People anyway, want to listen. They don't want to talk to us. This is a radio show. We will take callers. <laughs> <laughs> you will call us now. Let's call some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let's we have, randomly we can, call people. We can do outbound calls. We don't call have some more of that start, whiskey. Yeah, you can freaking call. drunk dial right, some let's people. Let's get her going, huh? We'll get the call. white pages. <laughs> Christopher Leppert, you want to get on the phone here? Let's go. I got your phone number. Let's go, buddy. <laughs> Oakshire Dreams, Drew, I got your number. I got all y'all's numbers. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Tungsten Super Shot. 
Oh, he's telling us what it's yeah. for when I was acti- act- asking. Number nine questions. weighs as much as a number five in lead. And oh. that's the truth. Tungsten, tungsten is well, Yeah, the only reason I know twi- about tungsten is from ice fishing, heavy. actually. That's yep. how I know that. Well, that's not the only reason. I know rings are made out of them, too. Not mine. But, but they they hit hard. I mean, I've I've shot ducks out of the air with with tungsten loads. Like, I had no business even shooting at. You know, drop them at 60, 70 were yards they, away. Were they in the clouds and you couldn't see them? Well, oh, they weren't quite that high, but it was like, well, it's a Hail Mary. Let's let her rip. You know, <laughs> pull about four feet in front and squeeze off, and down down goes a mallard out of the, that group of ducks. It's pretty awesome. Hey, Chris, you got the memo. Welcome to the show. You're live hey. on the podcast. What's going on, bud? It's Drew. Oh, well, shit. Why does it say? This happens every damn time. What's up, Drew? Yeah, it does, man. Drew. What's going on? I Hi, had Drew. to call in so you guys at least have one caller. Well, thank let you. you guys just not. You, yeah, Thanks, buddy. You can be the one and only. That's okay with us. We're rocking your dirty hen calls over yeah, here. Yeah, he's Drew. a thunder chicken whisperer over there, yeah. Drew. Yeah, I, I try my best. I mean, I took it out, tested the newer one again with some gobblers on public land, and they all loved it. A lot more turkeys out there than I thought this year because I didn't see any for, I don't know, half a month now so i got a little worried but i mean they they like it so i guess that's all that matters to me is that the calls work <laughs> yeah that does that's important no we got we all got them here so who, who, who brought them to us in the dells i forget who dropped them off uh quentin he's i kind of started a field staff thing for dirty hunter calls because between me and the guys in oak your dreams we can only do so much so i wanted to get more out there and you know promotion type stuff Cool. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate it. We're going yeah, to definitely uh, hopefully kill some birds with them. Yeah, no one gagged. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope they work for you guys. You know, it, I kind of like uh, how Matt said, like a wall of shame. I have a jar of shame with a lot of calls because I don't <laughs> send out any that look wrong or, you know, just when you look at the mouth call on the read part, you can kind of tell if it's going to work or not. And I just kind of jar it up because I ain't going to send out a bad call. I sent out one, but it was you're not brother, trying so them yourself. I guess that's you're not, okay. You're not. Yeah. you're not putting them in your mouth. Hey, we've tested these. That's why they're dirty and <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, like, we put the dirty like, in the dirty and How do you know they? <laughs> they're like, how do you know these work? I'm like, well, I technically don't. It's just repetition, I guess. <laughs> you gotta just mess with someone next time. Drew, like, how do you think we got the name Dirty Hen Calls? <laughs> <laughs> Drew likes that. Yeah, exactly. winter green <laughs> tobacco. Is that winter green? <laughs> You always tasted that at the uh, Ducks Unlimited. The wintergreen flavor? Ducks Unlimited shows. You go test out a duck call. Yep, someone was here with a little cherry. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. That red man? Yeah, a little red man. Yeah. Yeah, people are trying out their <laughs> tubes at the trade shows, and yeah, they're mouthing them up a little bit. As long as they're not sticking their tongue down. Sir, you're not supposed to tongue them. (laughs) You're (laughs) going to mess the read up. No French. That's all you, buddy. (laughs) Sir, get your tongue back in your mouth. It's not French. It's the wrong end, sir. (laughs) Well, or not. You can have that one. (laughs) Right in the gutter. (laughs) You try yourself. I don't think I tried it out yet. So, so what tags do you have this year, Drew? Uh, Well, I have a tag for my. My son got his first tag this year awesome. for a U season. Oh, he has cool. four season technically, but we're going to try that. But the weather kind of took a turn, and it's going to be kind of shitty. But other than that, I have second season and fourth season. Sweet. Two darn good seasons, so, if you ask and me. Between, They're all good seasons. <laughs> Let's no be fans. honest. Yeah. Bad season. And between all of us with Oak Tree Dreams, I mean, we're hunting every season, so it's, we're not going to really miss one, but – I definitely prefer later seasons just because in the beginning they're, I don't know, just more hand up and they don't like to get away from anything. And we, you get some of those lone gobblers in the afternoon, but I mean, it's kind of far and in between. If you call on the hen with the gobbler, now that's the key. You got to make that hen come in. Screw the gobbler at that point. That's what you're talking about where you're going against nature. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. If you can convince the hen to yep. come, the, the gobblers will follow. But if you notice, only the boss hens come into calls usually. Because they're like, this ain't Sally. Yep. Yeah. Who's this bitch? You know, like, come check out the whole off the Yeah. Head, that's yeah. What <laughs> yeah, they're just like whitetail in the sense that whitetail, the, their their nose is smelling at that molecular level. They know what who is, you know, marking up a, a, a scrape or whatever. The, the turkeys can hear who mm-hmm. is who. They know who is yep. who. So it's not a familiar sound. But if I do it, they're like, that bitch has been smoking for far too long <laughs> or something. I can, I'm going to try your dirty head one right now. <laughs> there you go. 
Hey, that don't, that don't sound bad, though. Yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. Keep practicing. <laughs> Every time yeah. I practice, you got a short ride, ride to work. That was better. Oh. It was the call, not the call. Yeah, a lot of people can't get mouth calls to work when they first try them, so that's, that's good. I got a 45-minute ride to work every morning. I will get this thing singing right. Uh, cover and ground, good, good <laughs> friends of ours. They just asked, um, and maybe, maybe Drew, maybe you want to take this one. Uh, he said, no, let's just get on the other question on the screen here. Never hunted turkey, but considered bow hunting for them. Uh, thoughts? Also, what do you think about using a regular whitetail fixed blade broadhead versus a giant turkey blade? That's coming from Matt with uh, cover and ground. Honestly, shoot what flies best out of your bow if you've never done we, it. You want to be 100% accurate and confident in the arrow flight uh, no matter what you're shooting at so shoot that fixed yeah. blade a- aim for the base of the wing but study study a vital chart because yeah. they are way bigger when they're puffed up they are uh you gotta aim it's basically center mass it's not it's what you're trying to hit oh, yeah you can easily miss when they're they're all fanned out to be staring at the fan <laughs> yeah Eyes up here, pal. <laughs> hey, I'm down here. I'm down here. <laughs> Tom DeCray said he's probably shot uh, 10 birds with his whitetail setup. Works fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, it's a lethal setup. If it can kill a deer, it can kill a bird. Yep. Right? Sharp sh- blades. Theoretically. Shot placement. That's yeah. the big thing. Yep. Cool. Now, Drew, thanks well, for calling in, man. I to do this. I, I, I was going to say, I do have a customer, like I said, was going to happen. So, you know, I called from work because you, you got to deal with your customer if you're born some days. Thanks. We appreciate <laughs> it. Have a good day, guys. You too, buddy. Thank hey, you. Thanks a lot, Drew. Take care. <laughs> I have a customer standing here. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a question sir, real quick. Sir, I'm <laughs> no, I was actually trying to get into the podcast over there. <laughs> what are you talking to on the phone? Uh, this is a radio show. <laughs> I didn't win anything, but I tried. <laughs> Awesome. I was talking to corporate. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I was talking to corporate. corporate. We got this. He probably works for like a local company. You guys have a corporate head corners? We do now. They're on a condom walk. Yeah. They're right <laughs> They're condom and they walk. work late hours. <laughs> Very late. They've been drinking. <laughs> well, good episode, fellas. I think we can pull the plug on this one for now. Well, I think we're going to do a fishing one after this, right? Sure. Is that the plan? Yeah, might Let's as well. It. Knock it out. I don't know why you guys want a drunk Eric Clark on your fishing podcast. That's <laughs> where you sound the best. <laughs> Gonna bump up ratings. Oh, yes. God. <laughs> you start making sense. <laughs> we went to 600. We got to 602. I had to kick a few out. We're back down to 600. <laughs> so it's all We're going to lose followers. <laughs> yeah. Hey, also, uh, so I'm going to just housekeeping thing here. Uh, Ducklander podcast. We inadvertently named it the same name as somebody else that has a, a duck call company called Duck Lander. Two words, not one like we had done it. Um, I don't know how we missed that. We did call the owner of the company. Super good dude. So if you need a, a duck call, like I think they probably make great calls. They've been in business for 20 years. So um, pretty neat company. Pretty cool guy. Probably will be a guest on our podcast at some point now from uh, the result of that call. But uh, we have decided to change the name to not cause confusion in the marketplace. And I'm not in business to piss anybody off. So um, the new podcast name is UpDuck. And uh, it's a mix between upland hunting and duck hunting or waterfall hunting. So not to be confused with like, upchuck. Yeah, well, it smells like <laughs> what's up, uh, what, Doc? Do it, Yeah, there's, you got Bugs Bunny that says what's up, Doc. You got uh, the whole uh, up dog thing. It smells like up dog in here. What's, what's up, up dog? dog? Not much. What's up with you? <laughs> like so, every every person we've told the name <laughs> that is a shit eating grin right, right there. there. <laughs> He's ready. <laughs> every person we've told the name up duck to has did been. I, did we very forget happy. to mention we're dropping? <laughs> <laughs> we're sponsored by Drop Time Spirits. My Drop Time Spirits. Um, have a little Drop Time today. <laughs> anyway, it's up, Duck, and uh, we're gonna start putting out episodes. So we we did one under the Ducklander name, and then we realized quickly that we we messed up because the Ducklander, the real Ducklander, started following us. I was like, wait, what's this? <sighs> I fudged up, guys. We're following ourselves. Who the hell is this? And this guy's probably like, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> awkward. Yeah. Like, he did say yeah. we when did start a podcast. <laughs> He did say we had a kick-ass logo. Oh, so if when you see it, the Up Duck logo is kind of cool. I think, like, I'm mm-hmm. obviously a little biased about it, but uh, does that mean we're all going to go duck hunting this year? We have to. So they have three hosts. It's, have not, you it's ever? none of us. Never. The hosts are are uh, it's Never. Tyler Meaden, Jeff Ludicky, who yep. was at the trade show with us. You met Jeff mm-hmm. uh, and Matt Jeske. So Matt lives uh, along the Mississippi. He duck hunts in a duck boat on the Mississippi. Jeff lives in the neighborhood across here from where I shot this buck, and Tyler uh, lives right down the road from here on Walk. 
And so a central thesis of that is like really focus on dog training. And, and so like there's field tests or what are they called? Field, what are they called? Field uh, trials. Field trials. Mm-hmm. Hunt tests. Mm-hmm. Hunt, hunt tests. tests. Field trials. And then, and then in the field. So Tyler, he does a lot of hunt test type training for dogs, for gun dogs. But Boyer. he's the first to admit that he can't hunt dogs really well. He doesn't train them for hunting. He trains them for these hunt tests. So then like the other guys Makes zero sense, are really it? good in the field with dogs. Two different worlds. A lot of different dog breeds uh, amongst the three of those guys. Uh, a lot of dog training, a lot of upland and duck hunting. So I'm just going to plug in here because it's like officially launching, and I thought it'd be worth the a fish. Okay, it's fish. Yeah, I see what yeah, you did. yeah. We have a network now. We have a network. We have the Fisher, the up, uh, the up duck, and the OKS hunter. So up duck. I don't want got a different name. We could have called it OKS, but we're like, yeah, some of you guys duck hunt, some of you pheasant hunt. So we tried to do a little. Uh, I don't know what this is. Collab. Means. Yeah. I just Collab. keep doing this and no one can can hear me on the, on the thing. It's one I of don't these. know what to do with my hands. It's one of these. One of these. You know, <laughs> this. You, just, you put your hands together are, and. Are and you traveling? Them. Traveling? What, what are you doing? What are you doing there? So, yeah, that's uh, what I have about that. Pew, so. pew. <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Open the doors and see all the people. Hey. Go call Kirk Kamara. Anyway. It's, uh, it's, uh, what, which, which one is. Uh, Oh, that's not the right one. Cricket. That, that's that's about what it's gonna be. <laughs> Fitting, Lord Lord have mercy. There we go. Let's do the. That's the best. There one. it is. That's the best him? one. <laughs> well, yeah, you figured out how to close it out. There you go. Yeah, You're we're getting good. there. You're getting there. Yeah, that's all. You got those little bird lips. You got those little bird lips. <laughs> Well, Most you. important part of turkey hunting, anyway, is just sitting still. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it is. They have, they have really good vision. <laughs> Sit down and right shut here. up. And if you got good enough decoy set up, they'll come right to them. Well, so by the way, I'm just only going to go hunting with somebody here because I don't have anything. <laughs> like, come with. I'm not doing any work here, guys. I'm just going to. What show I think up. we need to do, honestly, is I'll the, pay four, for breakfast, the okay? four of us need to like settle on a spot and let's just go tag team it. The four of us. We go with Matt's unreliable guide service. There we go. Yeah. We'll put yeah. you on some if, you, if someone could get me to kill a bird, you are the best guide service. Because as we've learned, I'm the problem. And if I you don't can, know, if man. You get I get bad open I, to I, get something. I just had piss poor permission and couldn't get you on a good spot. You were going to come. I had that bird roosted you last year. But you did. You I, had, I, I thought for sure days. he was going to go there. You days. texted me at like 2 in the morning that your kids were oh, sick. Yeah. And you were up all Classic. night. You couldn't Shit hit make it. Shit hit the fan. Yeah, I was. Like, I had a name Holly's tag like, around that thing. Said Eric's turkey. Ho- Holly's <laughs> like, you, you better. I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. She's like, he literally you caught need it to. from the roost, put a neck Son tag of a on bitch it. Was tied up to a tree. Now I had to go <laughs> let it go the next day. Yeah, I had to go over there with wire cutters and clip it. <laughs> anyway, you guys have a good night. We're gonna mute the mics and roll out this music here. So, adios, peace. <laughs> <laughs>